Hello, and welcome back to Making Meaning. I'm Miss Keller, and I usually teach at Wing Luke, but feel very grateful to get to teach all of you this week our strategy of visualizing. Remember yesterday, we read Song of the Dolphin, a poem by Georgia Hurd, and we practiced visualizing or making a picture in our mind. For today's lesson, we're also going to be visualizing, and you are going to need to have someone that you can talk to. Because remember, sharing your thinking out loud, do explain ideas clearly and understand the ideas better. You can talk to a stuffed animal, talk to a pet, grab a family member and share your thinking with them, or use one of my friends that I have here today and talk right to them. Go ahead and get your partner now. Scholars, today we're going to read another poem by Georgia Hurd. This one is called Dragonfly. And as I read today, your job is going to be to visualize or picture in your mind what the dragonfly is doing. To give you some background on a dragonfly, I got a great picture of one. Dragonflies are very colorful. They have long wings and long bodies. They can be one to four inches long. And they live in small bodies of water like ponds. Now that you have an idea of a dragonfly, I'm going to read this poem to you two times, just in case you forgot something after the first read. Dragonfly. It skims the pond's surface. To skim means to move over something lightly. It skims the pond's surface, searching for gnats, mosquitoes, and flies. Gnats are small flies. It skims the pond surface, searching for gnats, mosquitoes, and flies. Outspread wings blur with speed. Blur means to move very quickly. Outspread wings blur with speed. It touches down and stops to sun itself on the dock. A dock is a landing place on water, usually made of wood. And stops to sun itself on the dock. Wings flicker, that means move very quickly. Wings flicker and still. Stained glass windows, those are colorful windows. Wings flicker and still, stained glass windows with sun shining through. All right, scholars, I'm going to read it one more time. It skims the pond surface, searching for gnats, mosquitoes, and flies. Outspread wings blur with speed. It touches down and stops to sun itself on the dock. Wings flicker and still, stained glass windows with sun shining through. All right. You're visualizing what the dragonfly is doing. When you share today, you're going to use our sentence stems like we did yesterday. Repeat after me. I pictured blank. Go ahead. I pictured blank. Or I imagined blank. With me, I imagined blank. Take another minute to think and then go ahead and share with your partner. Scholars, do you know what Wags just shared with me? That when he heard this poem, he imagined the dragonfly flying quickly over the water surface and then landing on the dock to sun itself and get warm. You might have imagined something a little bit different, and that's okay. Because we all have different experiences. We are just using the text to support our thinking and our own experiences. We're going to practice using the text now. Thanks, Wags. You're going to see the poem of the dragonfly on the screen. I'm going to read it aloud to you, and I want you to pick out the words or phrases that helped you to imagine what the dragonfly was doing. When we share our thinking this next time, 
you're going to use a new sentence stem for how the text supports your thinking. We're going to say, the words that helped me are blank. Try that with me now. The words that helped me are blank. Okay. Dragonfly. It skims the pond's surface, searching for gnats, mosquitoes, and flies. Outspread wings blur with speed. It touches down and stops to sun itself on the dock. Wings flicker and still, stained glass windows with sun shining through. Again, think about what words helped you make your picture in your mind. The words that helped me are, go ahead and turn to your partner. <music> Scholars, I wanted to show you some of the words that helped me when I was picturing the dragon, what the dragonfly was doing. Now, I'm not going to use every word in the text, only the ones that stood out to help me make a clear image in my mind of the dragonfly moving. Some of the words that helped me were skims the pond's surface, wings blur with speed, and stops itself to sun on the deck, the dock, excuse me. These words make my image very clear of how the dragonfly was flying low over the top of the pond and then stopping to warm its body. Some other words that might have helped you are outspread wings, blur with speed. You'll notice them on your screen getting bold. Searching for gnats, mosquitoes and flies, and wings flicker and still. Again, notice I chose words that have to do with the description of how the dragonfly was moving because I was visualizing with that in mind. You might have chosen a few other words that stood out to you, and that's okay because remember, we all have a little bit different visualizations based on our own experiences. All right, scholars, in your classrooms, you had a similar chart posted on the wall of comprehension strategies. We're gonna have this live in our video classroom space now too. We've been working on visualizing. Notice my little girl, she's reading a book and thinking about what she was reading. And she's thinking what I picture in my mind. We're gonna continue practicing this strategy tomorrow and we practice this strategy every day when we're reading on our own. Now, like yesterday, it's your turn to practice this strategy independently or on your own. We have steps that we follow so that we are successful on our own. Step one, get a just right book. I've got mine here, and that means that I'm gonna read a page to you to show you exactly how you should know if this is your just right book. He began to pick them up. He noticed his collections had become jumbled. Big words next to little words, sad words next to dreamy words. There was one word that was tricky for me. That means that it, so far so good. Next, I'm gonna see, can I retell what I just read? His words fell, he picked them up, and then he noticed that he could put different words together than he had before. Just right book, that's step one. Step two, read with visualizing in mind. Now, we're gonna add on to this from yesterday. Yesterday, I had you stop and think, I pictured or I imagined. Today, after we read two pages, we're gonna stop and think, I pictured, I imagined, and the words that helped me are blank. Okay, so in this part, I pictured the little boy having words all over the floor around him, and him looking around and noticing that different words might go together. 
the words that helped me are big words next to little words, and his collections had become jumbled. Step three, read for 20 minutes. Stop and practice your strategy every page. Scholars, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow and continuing practicing our strategy of visualizing.